Hello, my name is Montserrat Manuvens and I'm going to present an approach to perform aerial six-dimensional quasi-static manipulation on a taut cable system called the fly crane. This is a joint work together with Didier Debord, Luis Ross and Juan Cortés that took place during my research stay at LAS in Toulouse last year and corresponds to the work that was presented during RSS. Aerial towed cable systems are commonly used in many applications such as rescue, delivery or transportation, as well as a soft landing device for the Curiosity Mars rover or even in assembly operations. There are many possible structures here. They can use from one to several cables and can be operated by one or many flying devices, for example, as the middle picture here. But observe that in all these applications, the load is manipulated in less than six degrees of freedom. And actually, little work has been devoted in the literature to the six-dimensional manipulation concerning both position and orientation. But some tasks do require such, such six-dimensional governing of the load. Like, for example, in this case here, where there's a fine manipulation being performed. As you can see, this assembly of a high, tower, a high voltage tower is an extremely difficult and dangerous task, but it would be much less dangerous if it could be performed by a robotic system able to manipulate the lower piece, the tower piece, in all six degrees of freedom. For that, we propose a special taut cable system, which is called the fly crane. This consists of a platform suspended from three flying robots by means of three pairs of cables as shown in the picture. Its actuation is performed by displacing the flying robots. Observe that three is the minimum number of flying robots that are necessary to govern the six degrees of freedom of the load, which leads us to a nine-dimensional configuration space. In fact, if we were using less than six cables, for instance, you can see here, you were, you, we are using just three, as you can see, the movements of the robots produce a shaky motion on the load, which is not desirable in fine manipulation problems. Instead, when using six cables, the load is much more stable as there is a full six-dimensional governing of the load whenever all cables are in tension. However, even when using six cables, we still can have situation where the load is difficult to govern. For instance, as you can see here, we can have a cable going, to, uh, going slack or too tight, or even when a robot needs its maximum thrust to compensate the pulling forces. To avoid all these kind of situations, a path planner is essential for the proper manipulation of the load, which is what we are going to propose here. For that, we will impose two main constraints that need to be satisfied in quasi-static manipulation, range visibility and thrust constraints. On the left, we assume that the range applied on the platform is subject to uncertainties, which we model as a six-dimensional ellipsoid of wrenches. And here we must ensure that the cables always work within a predefined range of admissible tensions for all the wrenches that lie in this six-dimensional ellipsoid. As it is known, the six-dimensional branch ellipsoid is mapped through a linear mapping into a six-dimensional ellipsoid in the cable tension space. In general, we just need to ensure that the, this blue box bounding the tension ellipsoid lies, lies within the tension limit box in red. 
But in the case of fine manipulation tasks, where the motion is performed quasi-statically, we also want that our tensions should be as far as possible from the limits. So, we want to maximize these offsets in green. On the right, for the thrust constraints, we must ensure that the resultant pulling force on each flying robot can be compensated, not exceeding the thrust in norm. As you can see here, the light blue is the resultant pulling force. In red, you have the thrust. And, as we said, the resultant pulling force should not exceed the thrust in norm. Which means that we want to maximize this offset H in green. So, we can formulate a cost function depending on the previous offsets. Actually, we can prove that maximizing such offsets is equivalent to minimizing this cost function. And actually, we can prove that, as you can see in the paper, that this cost function is smooth over all the range feasible and thrust feasible space, which ensures that no abrupt cost changes take place on our space. So, now let's assume that the region where both constraints are satisfied, let's assume that the C space is this white slide here, okay? And we can assume that the region where both constraints are satisfied is this, green, this uh, green one here. So to plan a manipulation path between two configurations, any path planner would work in general. But as we said before, in fine manipulation tasks, we want the path to be as far as possible from violating the previous constraints. This is why we take the previous cost function as a quality measure on this space, which provides us something like this mountain-shaped region. So now it is obvious that the previous path is not going to be valid in general, and the best path here would be this other one. So the suitable planning algorithm to be used here in this mountain-shaped space is the transition-based RRT, or TRRT. Let us first recall the RRT algorithm. So, it first generates a random configuration and finds the nearest neighbor within the tree previously computed. Then, interpolates along that path with some threshold reaching a new configuration that will be added to the tree only if the validation process of collisions and constraints is satisfied along the path. So now, in the case of TRRT, there is one additional step concerning the cost of the configurations. So, it actually evaluates the cost of the new configuration and if it's going downhill, the new configuration is immediately accepted. But if the cost is going uphill, the new configuration will just seldomly be accepted. And as you can see here in the simulation, the tree is biased using this TRRT algorithm, is biased towards low cost regions here painted in blue. So with all the described techniques, we can perform a simulation on an academic but challenging example. Here, the fly crane has to insert the yellow piece through the hole. And as you can see, it, it's performed uh, easily. But it can also be applied to more real problems, such as the assembly of a platform between two buildings. Let's play this. So here, as you can see, both 
The cable tensions and the pulling forces obtained with our approach in green are much better than those obtained with, uh, other, with the RRT, simple RRT algorithm in red. So, well, this is all. Thank you.